with the ASL. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, King of glory, we adore your name and we work to glorify you forever. It is through your will that we are alive and we are healthy today. Your grace has allowed us to converge together once again, Lord. You have promised that whenever we call on your name, you will hear us and answer us. So this evening we ask you to come into our midst. God, have fellowship with us. Make your blessings abundant and grace us with your presence. From the start of this meeting to the end, we ask that you glorify yourself and accept our prayers. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. Today we are looking at the three unnamed women of the Bible. Amen. You know, the Bible is filled with stories of amazing women whose names were not stated. That's cheating, isn't it? Don't you think that that's cheating? But what made many of them worth sharing was not their names, but the things they did and the impact that they had. It's really, really amazing. This evening, I want to highlight three unnamed women of the Bible and just one lesson, just one lesson that we can learn from each of their stories. And it's amazing because there, there are actually more than one lesson or there is more than, there is more than one lesson from all of these, these women. But we're only going to look at one lesson from each one. Amen. Now, the unnamed women of the Bible are the woman with the issue of blood, the Canaanite woman, and the Samaritan woman at the well. What I want us to understand is, yes, prayer is the way we communicate with God. Okay, so prayer really is everything, but it is not every time that is a time for prayer. It's not every situation. Amen. Amen. We're going to look at the woman with the issue of blood first. And she's actually the first unnamed woman in the Bible that we can learn from. What I have learned from her is this. It is necessary for you to fight for what you want in life. Don't ever let anyone tell you to let go of something. It is necessary for you to fight. If you want something in life, go for it, fight for it, and you will get it. Now, if you're not familiar with her story, please read the story in Matthew 9, verses 20 to 22, Mark 5, 24 to 34, and Luke 8, 43 to 48. And I will summarize it. I think I've become a, a master in summarizing now. A woman had been bleeding. She had a bleeding issue for 12 years. And she pushed through the crowd to touch Jesus. That is just what the story is. Okay? And the Bible tells us in Matthew 9, 21, that she did it because she thought to herself, if only I can touch his robe, I will be healed. She had purpose in her heart. Once I touch this man's robe, I am going to be healed. And as a result of her faith, she was healed. Beloved, you must fight for what you want. Simple. Nobody is going to fight that fight for you. So, how is it that this woman with the issue of blood teaches us to fight for what we want in life? Well, the Bible tells us as Jesus was on his way, the crowds almost crushed him. Luke 8.42, you can imagine how that place was. The crowds almost crushed Jesus. This woman, she did not, the woman with the issue of blood, she did not pray and hope that Jesus would notice her. Some of us are in the habit of that. You will sit in your house and you, or you say, I'm going from prayer program to prayer program. She didn't sit and wait for her prayer to be answered. She didn't even ask Jesus to heal her. It's, you know, this is such an amazing, crazy story. And it just shows the sort of God that we serve. Instead, we are told that she fought her way through the crowd to touch Jesus. Similarly, believers must learn to fight for what we want in life. I don't know what it is that is being withheld from you. Do you understand? You must not allow that thing to go. You must fight for it. We may think that Everything God wants us to have is going to come easy. It's a lie. It's a lie. It's not always the case. Do you understand? It's not always the case. Don't let anyone fool you. Remember the story of the children of Israel. God said to them, Canaan is their land. It was called the promised land. 
God promised them the land. But they still had to fight for that land. In fact, when it was time for them to acquire it, most of them were too afraid. So one entire generation missed out on experiencing it. They had to fight for the promised land. It was called promise. Don't you know, sometimes I have Christians say to me, SL, but if God wanted me to have it, don't stay in your house now and be sleeping now. If God wanted you, he would drop it on your lap because it's juju. So if you are letting a little resistance keep you back, <laughs> remember the crowd. There was a crowd between that woman with the issue of blood and Jesus and she pushed through. She didn't care any longer. You know, I'm sure she started moving in faith. Don't let the need for a fight keep you from getting what God may want to give you. Do you understand? If somebody else, they didn't, it didn't succeed for them, doesn't mean it's not going to succeed for you. I remember many years ago, the sister happens to be a member of the rebirth ministry. Many years ago, she was pregnant. I'll not forget this story. She was pregnant and I saw her in a, in a shop, a toy store. And she was pregnant and we were just talking and I said, oh, where, where, you know, when are you going to have your baby? She said, oh, you know, she, you know, she didn't really want to think about it because she's pregnant and she wanted to have a baby in America, but she didn't have a visa. And da, da, da. So I said, why don't you go and apply for a visa? She said, one of her friends told her that they are not giving visas. So I said, that friend you're talking about, where did she have her baby? She said, America. So I said, oh, so it is you that your own head is half. That they won't give a visa. But her own head is complete, Abby. I said, why don't you just go to the embassy? And lo and behold, the next time I saw her, she said to me, she went to the embassy and she, she got her visa. And her son was born in America. Do you understand? There are times you have to fight for what you want. And you will get that thing in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, the next person on the list. So we looked at the woman with the issue of blood. The next person on the list is a Canaanite woman. The Canaanite woman. Women, the unnamed women of the Bible. And one of the lessons we learn from the Canaanite woman, from her story, is that things are not always what they seem. Things are not always what they seem. If you're not familiar with the story, go to Matthew 15, 21 to 28. And once again, I'm going to summarize. So this woman had a demon-possessed daughter. And she went to Jesus and pleaded with Jesus to heal her. The story goes that for a while, Jesus was resisting because the woman was a Canaanite. But in the end, her faith caused him to grant the request. Things are not always what they seem. I've learned that. I've learned that. So how is it that the Canaanite woman's story teaches us that things are not always what they seem? You see, each time this woman pleaded with Jesus to heal her daughter, Jesus' reply suggested that the answer was no. Are we, are we familiar with the story? Are we familiar with the story? Matthew 15, 23a says, when she started to plead, it says, Jesus gave her no reply, not even a word. He didn't answer her. I ask you this question. If you ask someone for something and they don't answer you at all, wouldn't you assume that it is no? Wouldn't you take it for no? You ask someone for something, they don't answer you. You assume it is what? No. Well, the Canaanite woman, she did not see it that way. She continued to plead. Matthew 15, 24. Jesus said to her, I was sent only to help God's lost sheep, the people of Israel. She was a Canaanite woman. The Jew of Israel had already decimated a lot of them. As a Canaanite woman, she should have gotten the point by this time. But no, it didn't stop her. She continued to plead. Finally, Matthew 15, 26, Jesus then said to her, It is not right to take the food from the children and throw it to the dogs. <laughs> Please, by the time someone says this thing to you, don't you get the message? 
message was clear. But guess what the woman said to Jesus? Matthew 15, 27. <laughs> even, the drug, even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. She was not going to take no, whatever he was saying, for an answer. It was her response that caused Jesus to grant her request. Please, please, please don't make conclusions based on how things seem. A lot of the time you look and say, I thought. I was given the impression. I felt. I wasn't clear. Have you learned a lesson this evening? Don't make conclusions based on how things seem. I, you know, I say this to my children all the time. Making assumptions is one of the main things that keep us back in life. That lady, she's not approachable. Meanwhile, perhaps that is the lady that has the key to that thing you need. Because someone else said they spoke to her and she didn't respond the way they thought she was going to respond. Do you know, when I read this, you know, I've been reading this story eh, because I really like the story. Oh. I really, really like the story. Because there are times when people say something to me and I just say, I beg, I beg, I beg. Go and read the story of the Canaanite woman. See as Jesus spoke to her. So just don't disturb me. So I really, really like the story. But I never realized that at no point did Jesus explicitly say no to the Canaanite woman. He never said no to her. Although it seemed that way. So I ask you this evening again, what thing in your life seems one way but is not? What are the possibilities if you approach that thing as if it were not how it seemed? A lot of the time we second guess people. We are second guessing, assuming that this is the way they are, this is what they are thinking. Not finding out what exactly is it that you mean. And the third story, the last unnamed woman of the Bible, we're going to take just one lesson. We're only taking one, one lesson today. One, one lesson. The Samaritan woman at the well. The Samaritan woman at the well. And there are many lessons we can learn from her story, especially this one. We're only going to learn one lesson today. What does she teach us? She reminds us that words that we speak have power. And if you are unfamiliar with her story, check John 4, 1 to 42. Amen. So, let me summarize it. She was a woman that Jesus met and prophesied to at a well. That is it in summary. When she returned to her people in her town, the Bible states that many of the Samaritans from her town believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I ever did. John 4.39, realize this. There is nothing that you have done, you will do, that God is not aware of. Every single thing that you have done, God knows. But the lesson we are learning today is your words have power. So, how is it that this woman, her story reminds us that our words have power? Well, number one, the Bible tells us many believed because of her testimony. Many believed because of her testimony. It didn't matter that people may have known that this woman had five husbands. Please, you know, so many of us, we go about counting people's story for them. You know, let's learn to just zip your mouth, mind your business. Mind your business. I keep saying it even to myself. Let's say, mind your business. Can me mind your business? What another person, another person's journey is not your journey. Just shut up and mind your business. It didn't matter that the man she was currently living with was not even her husband. Do you know that? This woman was not even trying to persuade them to believe in Jesus. All she said, she just said her own, her own story. 
She said, this guy knows, knew everything about me. Everything. And the Bible tells us many believed simply because of what she said. She must have been an honest woman for people to believe. Because I tell you, there are many people in church who people don't believe. Yeah? Many people who are meant to be upright, people don't believe them. You have this woman with five husbands. The guy she was with currently was not even her husband. She was on someone else's. And yet, they believed her testimony about Jesus. That is how powerful our words are. And so in this story, we see a positive result of the power of our words. Proverbs 18, 21 tells us that the tongue can bring death or life. Those who love to talk will reap the consequences. It also indicates so, that our words can be destructive. I think this is one lesson we all must keep in mind anytime we speak. Remember that when you share your story, it can change people's lives for the better. Similarly, the things you say can also lead people astray. You know, we learned the other day, we learned the other day, when we were looking at the life of Manasseh, that a lot of the time when you lead people astray, it's very difficult for you to bring them back. We're stopping here because there are, others, there are other lessons from the story of the Samaritan woman at the well. We are going to touch on them, maybe tomorrow, but another time. Just a fraction of the unnamed women in the Bible and some lessons that we can learn from them. So, in summary, the woman with the issue of blood teaches us to fight for what we want. The story of the Canaanite woman teaches us that things aren't always what they seem. And the Samaritan woman of the well reminds us that our words have power. You know, I pray that you have found these three women, their stories inspiring and the lessons that have been shared from them informative. So let us just pray. Let's just thank God this evening for all he's doing for us, even in this season, how he's helping us to build our characters, how our, the woman with the issue of blood, you want the scriptures for the woman with the issue of blood let me just quickly get them out mm. matthew 9 20 to 22 mark 5 24 to 34 and luke 8 43 to 48 amen amen Amen. I hope you've got that. Let us just thank God for all he keeps doing for us. Let's thank him. Let's thank him. You know, I, I know one thing about God is that when God stirs me in a direction, it means there are some serious blessings that are waiting in that place. You know, so I know that even though I am growing and becoming more and more like his image, I am also being blessed. So let us make use of this opportunity that we've been given. And even then, let's pray. Let's pray. Our Lord and our God, Father, thank you for this word today. Father, we know that you are concerned about the legacy we leave behind for our families and our future generations. Father, we look back and we look at the stories of these three women. No names, but yet, Lord, they made a difference. They made a difference. Father, they have left a fantastic legacy. So Lord, Father, give us a desire to also leave legacies that please you. Father, we know that we don't always take our time to consider how much of an influence our lives and our actions have. Father, we see the life of that Canaanite woman we see the life of the woman at the well, the Samaritan woman. 
Father, please help us to remain in a place of greater awareness. In the mighty name of Jesus. Sometimes, Lord, we can overcomplicate things. Create issues where issues should not be. Father, in the first story, the woman with the issue of blood, it shows great faith. Great faith. Great faith. The Canaanite woman shows strong persistence. And the woman at the well shows obedience in going back to tell her people about the man she met at the well. And so, Lord, we know that even simple obedience to your word begins to create legacies for us. Thank you, Lord, for the straight path that you have directed us to follow because we are going to follow you, follow after you always. Father, we are asking you to empower us to follow through on what you ask us to do in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, give us the grace to keep your word ingrained in our hearts. Father, a lot of the time there's internal conflict caused by numerous things in our lives, in our hearts, in our minds that are fighting for the same place. But Lord, we tell you this evening that we want to know you. We want to love you with all our hearts. Father, thank you for your love that is overflowing in us, through us, Lord, Father. We pray that our family, our friends, our children, those that are around us, our colleagues, they see this and they are encouraged to do the same. We pray all this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And Lord, there are moments when we feel overwhelmed. We don't know what to do. Sometimes we feel like we are just failures, Lord. Help us, Lord, not to overcomplicate things. Father, the grace to be able to practice what you have taught us to do. The grace to be able to practice what we have seen you do. Father, help us to live our lives to make the most significant impact on future generations, Lord. In the powerful name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. And so, Father, we've come to an end or to the end of a wonderful time with you. Father, we are filled with deep gratitude and awe for the truths we have encountered. Thank you for the transformative power of your word in our lives. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. God bless each and every one of you. Thank you for sharing this evening with me. I am, you know, you don't realize how I am truly, truly grateful because I know you could be doing anything else. God bless you. Look forward to as many of you who will participate in our Bible study tonight on Zoom at 10 p.m. And quarter to eleven, quarter to midnight prayers, and of course, growing with God at midnight on Instagram. See you also at five a.m. on YouTube for our five a.m. declarations. God bless you. Have a fantastic evening, and remain lifted in His presence always. Amen. <laughs>